So let's have a bit of a theoretical look at balancing the balance sheet first. As I mentioned, there are three perspectives that we will take on, the first one being net income, the second one being, well, due to optimizing working capital, and finally we have the generalization of the entire balance sheet being balanced. So for the first phase, net income, we will just get the required inputs first, so that's net income as such. We'll use the cash and equivalents and counter accounts for balancing, so we need to get these as well. Then we will perform a case-by-case -case analysis in which we will distinguish six different cases for well, balancing the balance sheet. We will backlink those into the cash and equivalents and counter accounts, and well, that finally balances the balance sheet in this case here. Next, we will look at kind of a variation of that because, well, if you are a bit into corporate valuation and, for example, you adjust the present value approach, I will have a deep dive slide on that as well, but you will know that positive net income is in fact equivalent to negative delta net working capital. So this is a bit of a rub around your head because this working capital, it needs to be negative. We're looking at the delta over time and we're looking at the netted value. So arguably this gets a bit complex, but I will just explain to you why this is important to understand because it's effectively having an effect that's equivalent to positive net income. So what we will do in this Delta Networking Capital balancing phase? We'll first calculate the historic KPIs, that is REACHES, they are also called, so days inventory outstanding, days sales outstanding, and days payable outstanding. I will also have an explanatory slide for that in case you don't know these. We will apply optimizations to these. And from them, we will derive the balance sheet items, inventories, trade receivables, and trade payables. And then naturally, we need to well, balance the balance sheet again. We just imbalanced it by doing those optimizations. And for that, we're going to calculate a score called Delta Networking Capital, which is the difference between well, assets and liabilities and equity for those working capital items. We will look at deltas between periods, so the current period minus the previous period for each of these items, I for inventories, TR for trade receivables, and TP for trade payables. We will then again perform this six case by case analysis and link back the results. And this is just where I can show you that as opposed to using positive net income, you could as well just use negative delta networking capital. Finally, we will generalize the case of balancing delta networking capital to balancing, well, delta net balance sheet, I call it here. That's not really the term that exists in the corporate finance literature, but it would be the natural generalization of working capital to go with balance sheet here. Because we will first establish a purified relationship, that is, we will acknowledge that delta net working capital is just a subset of delta net balance sheet. Well, delta net balance sheet is just a delta between assets and liabilities and equity over time with A for assets and LE for liabilities and equity in our formula. And we need to remove some things here to get delta net balance sheet with this quotation mark here. So as we will use those for balancing, we need to remove cash and equivalents and counter accounts, of course. But also we need to take out of consideration the deficit not covered by equity and equity because we will take care of that in, well, the third step here when we will balance based on net income. So we will first balance based on delta net balance sheet, except for those items that I mentioned here. So cash and equivalents, counter accounts, deficit of code by equity and equity. And then as a second or third step here in this case, we will balance based on the net income. And that's, well, useful for two reasons. First of all, it separates the net income effect which is just informative in nature and second it also gives us more control over what we are doing in the model so this is why i do it like this here 